Hi, good morning and welcome to today's product in focus. US 30 there is still uh, pushing on a little bit higher, albeit it's coming off at session highs today. Uh, we are above potential uh, resistance at 14, uh, 16401, uh, which might, uh, well, it's kind of a broken resistance now expected to act as potential support. This candle that we've got today is not such a great start to the morning as we've already pushed up higher and then been uh, had that reversal right back down again. So this could be the uh, strategic level to look at. Um, the technicals have obviously already been oversold and have already pushed back through. We've almost got a crossover on the MACD, and uh, there isn't a huge amount of fundamentals due out until Wednesday, um, so we might still have a little bit of a rebound. Short term trends are still up, but maybe a little bit top heavy right across most of the European indices as well. So, um, 1641 will be the level to watch. Looking at the UK 100 now, uh, it actually uh, has gapped higher, but has then drifted down already. Um, you're probably looking at a 6270 is the next potential support level if we do continue to see a little bit of drift this morning. Technicals are obviously, um, they have been obviously are, are already oversold. Uh, they're already pushing up the, uh, to the top end, so we've got a breakout there on the 30% um, level on the RSI, which is a bit of crossover the 20% level on the slow stochastic. So certainly some of these technicals are, are looking a little bit more bullish now, but um, the candle today already is, uh, is on the wrong side of the line, so um, there looks to be a little bit of pressure. Uh, so 6270 is the level to watch out for. Japan 55 had a massive surge, but it's because they had a, a, bit, of a bit of a difficult session there on Friday. Um, but we've moved up to 14977 uh, uh, as a potential broken resistance, which might now act as support that we talked about before. Um, as the as the moves in the Japanese yen that are going to be of greatest interest to Japan 55 traders. So there's already been um, surveys come out of Japan. Uh, saying that 110 yen is probably as weak as they want uh, dollar yen to go because various raw material costs such as crude oil and imports because obviously Japan relies a lot on their imports the yen weakens too much certain sectors will get hit particularly hard and it makes it even harder because obviously Japan imports most of this fuel and with Fukushima being shut down and the nuclear option off the table they have to import a lot of energy costs so obviously yeah, weaker yen is great for their global companies who are uh, you know, taking cash in and dollars and euros and whatnot. Uh, but when it comes to importing raw materials, um, you know, that weaker yen is beginning to hurt them a little bit now as well. So it's a balancing act, getting the yen weak enough to benefit um, the exporters uh, versus the importers. So this is going to be a very interesting uh, kind of moves. So we've talked about government intervention should dollar yen get to 115, 120. Um, but obviously we're a little bit away from there right now, but we have been seeing surges in the US dollar across the board again as ever, and that's uh, helping dollar yen to retest 107 spot 36, which is the potential resistance level to watch out for. Looking at West Texas crude, lots of volatility again. Fundamentals haven't drastically changed. Uh, $84 is going to be the potential resistance level. Um, we're not seeing much movement already this morning. Um, it could be very easy to see that there could be a little bit further weakness on here to watch out for. So gold has uh, kind of stabilized around about 1240. Um, obviously dollar has been gaining. Interest rate talk has waned. So it's kind of tough to get an understanding of where gold's going to go next. Obviously, there's been a little bit of volatility recently, just a little bit there last week. Um, but I guess the market's waiting to see what happens next. So already you're beginning to see a bit of a flat line in gold in the shorter time frames. So round about this level here, uh, I might have we're quite a good bit away from there. But as you can see here, this was previous broken support. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and draw that one on there. Uh, we are looking at round about. 1240 is the potential resistance, and that's exactly where we are today. So that could be the potential pivot level to be aware of. So moving on to euro dollar, it's resuming a slide as the US dollar um, resumes its advance right across the board. One spot 2746 is the next potential support, followed by one spot 2661. Technicals are now very neutral. Uh, they've already had quite a big upswing that's taken some of the pressure at that of the of the uh, of the shorts. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of potential traders might be looking at this as a new opportunity to reinstigate those potential short positions on uh, euro dollar. But we've got two levels of support to get through already. But the last uh, two candles have been particularly negative. Well, but matter of fact, Thursday's one not, is not negative, sorry, my mistake. But the fact is that we didn't follow through with a positive candle right there. Um, and the fact that we're now kind of floating around with one spot 2746 is indicative of that pressure on euro dollar. So finishing up with GBP USD. Um, Similar kind of package, still in downtrend. Um, we're not getting a, the same level of aggressiveness on the dollar versus the sterling. 
as we have against some other FX pairs. Um, we are slightly negative today, don't get me wrong, but uh, we could be getting a slight curvature of this um, of this trend right here. So rather than it being quite a steep decline, we are maybe bottoming out around about one spot 59, one spot 60. So it will be uh, interesting to see in the next couple of sessions. We're, we do have some data due for the uh, for for uh, the UK on Tuesday, uh, but nothing dramatically major. But um, these are the levels to be aware of. So looking at the economic kind of data wise, there's nothing really much else to um, to come out with today. Balance of payments and nothing really special. Fast forwarding on to Tuesday, we've got some uh, Chinese GDP figures. Obviously, these figures here are going to be quite keenly watched. Industrial production, they'll be out depending on which time zone you're watching this on. It's at 3 a.m. UK time. We've got public sector finances, uh, the net borrowing costs in the uh, for the UK, and then we've got existing home sales in the US. And then if we fast forward on to Wednesday, that's when we start to get something a bit more tastier. When we've got a uh, US CPI, uh, which will be probably the most keenly watched data release for the first couple of days uh, and we'll cover some of the later ones later on in the week um, keep your eye on the chart form as ever make insights part of your layout and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next